Welcome, welcome. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, today, I got Richard Irving uh, joining with me today, the owner of LKG, Truck and Trailer Repairs. Uh, we want to talk to you up updates about the market, about the shop, what's the latest out there, latest and greatest. Yes. So, yes, let's get in uh, into number one. Let's, uh, I'll just give you a little bit run uh, on the market. Um, it is amazing what's going on. Uh, you know, the market is uh, trying to bounce back. Uh, and just like I uh, mentioned to you guys last time, uh, you know, we pretty much hit uh, the bottom uh, of the market. And the good news is that it's starting to already climb up. I just want to show you a couple uh, uh, um, graphs. Uh, that kind of uh, confirms this once again. Uh, right now I'm looking at Sonar, uh, it's a uh, freight uh, waves. Uh, this is a US volume trend year over year. And if you look at it closely, this blue line, I know it's a lot of lines. I send you guys an email with all of these, by the way, before this meeting. So if you haven't had a chance uh, to look, uh, you know, because it's too small screen for you right now, you can go back to your email and you can look at this. But check this out. Uh, this blue li line right here is this year. And as you can see on average, you have previous years, uh, which is uh, 2019 and looks like, what is that, 2019 and 2020. Uh, that were approximately the same on the volume uh, index. Uh, this is a United States, the whole average of United States. So as you can see, we're at the bottom there on the volume. So that's good news uh, that we, uh, and that confirms uh, what I'm talking about. Um, next uh, slide is showing uh, tender rejection index uh, from uh, specifically from Sonar. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, uh, this has to do with uh, uh, about taking 80% uh, of data from the whole uh, industry, trucking industry, uh, about 80% of it, and they uh, push it all through this algorithm to uh, give them an idea of uh, what, what is the market doing, spot market specifically. This is all spot market, by the way. So if you look at this uh, right here at the bottom, the blue line, that's also this year, and as you can see, we're also at the bottom, okay? Uh, so uh, it's only, it, it can only go up basically from here. And there's a lot of room to go up as you can see. Uh, you know how the waves goes, right? Okay, the next one is uh, taking those two and comparing them in the last five years. So US volume versus rejection index. And if you look at that, uh, this is going back to 20, uh, starting 2018 and going all the way till today, uh, you see the waves? Do you see the waves? I told you they happen around every, uh, on average, about every four years. So as you can see, uh, from 18, it went down, then up uh, in, uh, right after COVID, uh, it started to go up, <clears throat> 2021, 22, and then it went down from there in 20, uh, you know, end of, uh, middle to end of 2022 uh, until right now. So volumes has been dropping, as, and look at the volume. The volume is, is the blue uh, uh, light, uh, you know, color line. And you can see that uh, it dropped to the same level as before. And then the rejection index is also approximate, the green line is approximately same as before uh, in 2019 and 2020. Um, next one is uh, equipment uh, based on, or, this, the rejections index based on trailer type, okay, or equipment type. And as you can see, uh, so let's see, what do we got? Van is the blue, uh, green is the uh, flatbed or step deck, and then red is the reefers. So those of you that are thinking, well, what should I do? Which trailer should I do? Uh, think about where you are, think about uh, you know, the market uh, around your home, if you want to stay home or close to home. Uh, think about what is the best uh, type of loads that you have. And then 
uh, you know, it's really preference, uh, really, because if you want to stay up at night for, uh, you know, uh, pickups and deliveries on reefers, uh, that's one of the disadvantage of it. On step decks and flatbeds, you have, uh, uh, you know, it's more during business hours, but uh, you have to uh, pretty much deal with uh, physical work, you know, uh, tarping, all of that. So that uh, uh you know i hope this will help you to decide if you haven't uh, you know uh, figured that out yet uh and then uh, next one is outbound rejection index uh for um uh the out uh, rejection index versus truck stop uh spot rates uh so uh, spot market rates so if you look at this uh, uh i mean we actually haven't gotten as low as before or we gotten very close to it uh, but uh, obviously that big dip in 2020, that was COVID and, uh, you know, the whole country shut down. So I don't think we're going to be getting that low. Uh, but we have gotten quite a bit low on the rates overall. And the rejection index is uh, down there for sure. So and we have room to go up. Um, and then uh, also in the last five years, uh, this looks at different types of uh, loads sizes. So you got the city loads, the short haul loads, which is 100 to 250 miles, uh, medium haul loads, uh, 250 to 450 miles, tweeter loads, uh, 450 and 800 miles, and then anything over 800 is long haul loads. So what's interesting, uh, look, at the, uh, look at the section where the rates are, uh, where they were good, right? Where the market was good. And the highest ones uh, paying per load was always a tweener load. It's that purple color. It's uh, loads between 450 miles and 800 miles. And then the next best one after that is orange, which is the mid-haul loads, which is the 250 to 450. And then only after that, you have the long-haul loads. So uh, any, and this, I've talked about this before, but any time in the market, you will never have a long haul load paying better on the rate than those tweener loads or that mid haul load. But anyway, um, I send you guys also a link about a Coyote, uh, 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 an update that they did, uh, or a forecast, I should say, that they did uh, recently. And this is something really, really cool. These are just the two that I, uh, you know, took out. But there's a lot of interesting things in that uh, link. If you want to click on that, I send it out today. Uh, but this is interesting because if you look over here, you know, you can see that we're pretty much uh, to the same level as before, before everything went down, you know, uh, in 2020, COVID and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're down there. Now with the banks closing and everything that's going on, I don't know if you guys heard, there was another company, about 170 trucks uh, that actually was shut down recently. Uh, Bob sent me that, uh, uh, you know, a, a, an awesome uh, um, video about that. And here's the thing. I mean, we, what we as PDP, as self-dispatched owner-operators, what we have over those guys is, number one, number one very, very important thing, our rates are spot market rates. And we can maneuver and we can change and shift gears into anywhere in the country uh, at will. Uh, whereas that other company, they were locked in with contract rates. Their, their whole fleet pretty much was mostly con uh, contract rates. And whenever the major company decided to cut that off and right. because they got another bid that was better, all of a sudden they had to shut down the whole company. You know, I, I actually uh, had a similar situation uh, when I was doing local business uh, when I just started trucking in 2008, 9, 10 that crash when all that happened uh, with the house market, I experienced the same thing. I was without work for six months until something just clicked and like, okay, I got to do something, you know. I tried to go to work somewhere, <laughs> but that wasn't cutting it, you know. Uh, you know, um, I mean, I had a truck payments and stuff like that. Uh, but bottom line, I mean, it's very important to understand that looking at this uh, uh, map right here or uh, graph right here, you see how the contract rates, that uh, blue light uh, uh, color, it's much smaller. It's much more safer, right, you can yeah. say, right? Definitely. But the spot market is wild. The good thing about spot market is at the top, you're making killing money. At the bottom, yes, 
You got to be ready for that. Which is good, again, good news for you guys, because I've been talking about this for how long now? And you guys are all prepared, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, this is what smart business uh, owner operators do. It's not, you know, oh, I just jump back and forth between companies because somebody else said there's a penny more. No, it's a strategy. It's a long-term strategy. And right. this is the main reason why I talk to you guys about this stuff because all of this is useless if you're not applying it. But if you can use this information to think, right? Think, how can you make this work for you so that uh, you're making good money, you're preparing for the tough times, and you're able to slide through? Because what is it about? It's about the waves, waves. right? How many times have I talked? When was the first? I mean, I've been talking about this long, long time now, but this is the trick though, guys. This is the trick. We are right in the beginning. As you can see, uh, this surfer guy, he's looking forward, right? That's you, okay? That's me. That's all of us right here. That's this guy right here. We're looking forward and we know based on everything, our experience, uh, what we see in the market. I mean, I just showed you a whole bunch of stuff. Like we know that we know that we're just about to catch the wave. Okay, we're just about to catch the wave. And this is the good news because the guys who are here right now uh, and they're already in the water, you're going to be the first one to actually make the most out of this. A lot of guys, they're waiting on the beach there, right? They're just waiting, waiting, well, you know, looking out and seeing if the waves are there. They're like, no, that one's not good enough. No, that one's not good enough. You know, yeah. speculating all of this stuff, right? Yep. But here's the thing. You're not one of those guys. You're in the water. You're ready. And because of that, you will be one of the first. Those guys on the beach, by the time they hear, uh, hey, from the, from the inside, by the time they see, they start to jump in. You know, and this is a, a truck driver at the truck stop telling you these amazing stories of making these millions of dollars from a load and stuff like that. Well, yes, because he was the first on the wave, okay? But then by the time those guys start to get in, they already get in somewhere around C to D right here. And they catch maybe the, uh, the wave, maybe a second wave or something like that, but it's not the same, okay? Yeah. It's not the same. And this is what I've been telling you guys. So, uh, I mean, that's the latest. That's the latest updates uh, on the market. A surfer is only as cool as the wave allows him to be. This is so true. I mean, you want to be the guy on the right or the guy on the left. I mean, I'm just, it's your choice, okay? Um, Richard, yes, so what's finally, the Finally, <laughs> LKG is finally open. Uh, we actually moved into the building on January the 1st. So we haven't actually been open a full 90 days yet, but we have made amazing treadways. So we are, um, we actually have our website completely up and going. Um, definitely go, when you have a chance, just go onto our website, which is lkgrepairs.com. Uh, check that out. Please give us feedback. Uh, also, we have a full crew now. We have, we have five technicians. All of the technicians are actually certified in, um, in, in, in uh, breaks. And we're also getting certif certification in all ASC certifications and all the other aspects of diesel technicians. So, so all of my guys will actually know what to do and also have the specs to go along with all of that. Uh, another thing is we, we actually interviewed, what, Peter, over 50 guys, and we ended up with, with five a technicians. A lot of work. I mean, it was a, yeah, a lot of work, a lot of people, um, but we only want someone that's, first of all, that's going to work within our culture, and secondly, is a true diesel technician, not someone that is just kind of saying that they're a diesel technician. Yeah, on this picture, there's one guy missing because he had a family okay, thing, yeah. so, but yes, we have five guys. I'm <laughs> so excited. <laughs> yes, handpicked, qualified. Go ahead. Yes. So uh, also, LKG is now, we have inventory on hand for, for maintenance, which means that we have brake uh, shoes on site. We have uh, filters for oil changes, for PMs. We have those on, on hand right now. So, and the other thing, we are, we're also keeping low profile tires um, on hand. Um, so we can do all of those. I also uh, have a partnership with a um, AC warehouse, which means that I can get all of the AC parts, almost depending on any type of truck that you have, I can actually get those 
within minutes. AC compressors, AC condensers, radiators, uh, which that's a that's really a, a big deal, especially for down south, to be able to get those parts and have them turned around that quick. So basically, you can come in and we can do a, a complete AC service on the same day. And of course, we're in our really nice new renovated building now, which is a also has a shop. We have an eight bay shop, which is heated, which is a big deal in the winter time. Um, guys tend to work a lot faster when they're not shivering. So uh, a heated shop makes a really big difference. Um, as I said, we have eight bays and we're also, um, we have towing services and we also have the ability to rent trucks. So even if you need a major repair, we can actually provide a rental for you while you're getting your truck service. And yep. some of our future goals are, we want to have a way to provide um, all you guys with what we would call service credit. Um, what service credit is, is it'll work a lot like a credit card, which means that anywhere you are in the, in the United States, you will actually have a credit card that you can actually have service on. So even if you have a service need outside of Texas, you know, you, you can still have a, have a means to, to have your truck repaired and back on the road. Uh, we also want to want to have a partnership and that's something that I'm currently working on is a, uh, a national account for tires so that way no matter where you are in the nation you can have a discounted tire program to where you can get you know tires at a discounted rate so that rate will be already negotiated here and it'll be the same all over the nation. Um, also we have a, a partnership um, to where if you have a breakdown, I want a list of shops that we have kind of already vetted for you guys so that if you mm. have a, a breakdown in another state, we have a list of this is somewhere that you can go that they're not going to try to take advantage of you. Uh, we already have a relationship with, you, with, with that shop. Um, they're going to do everything that they can to take care of you. And because we have a relationship, you kind of get bumped up instead of having to wait two and three weeks. You get, they'll get you in the shop a lot quicker. So that's something that we're, we're actually working on for the future. Wow, that's a lot of work that's done, but also very ambitious plans. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, here's the thing though, disclaimer, okay? Uh, we're working on this and we do want to make sure that yes. this is our strength, okay? LKG, the shop part of things, it's a separate company from PDP, but yes. we want to make sure that it is our strength, the partnership. So yes, all of those things uh, sound really cool and that's exactly where we want to be. We want to be professional. We want to be much better than any other small pop trucking company that you go to or if you yes. were to go to. But everything about us, the difference is you are our customer. You, the owner operator, is our customer. So we want exactly. to do this for you. Um, what do you think? Uh, I mean, all of this that you mentioned, some of it uh, is already in, some of it is not yet, some of it is uh, right. on the way. But like, what do you think the timeline on this? I would say uh, the service as far as uh, national account for tires, that's something that I'm already working with uh, Continental on. Uh, we're really close. I'm just basically the guy isn't at the price point I would like to see. And, and we're negotiating on that. He, of course, he has to run that up to corporate. I would say we should have something back on that within about, probably about the next three weeks or so. About okay. two and a half, three weeks. I hope so, yes. Um, that, but hey, be hey, a really good hey thing. just don't be in a hurry. We need, <laughs> we need to have a good discount, okay? So yeah. I know that you guys probably want to, uh, you know, and it would be cool when we get it. But if it takes longer, that's okay because the deal has to be worth it. Yes. Otherwise, like, it, it doesn't make sense. Go ahead. Right. And then uh, another thing is where the thing is probably going to take the longest is getting relationship with other shops in other states because we want to vet these guys. We just want to go down a, a telephone directory and just pick out a group of shops. We want to know firsthand that these guys are going to stand behind their word. They're going to take care of you the same way that we would. Mm -hmm. So that's going to take a little bit more time. I would probably say that's anywhere between six months to a year out before we you know, really get a stockpile of, of shops that we're, we can truly recommend because if we recommend you to a shop, we're, we're basically putting our name on the line that this is someone that's going to treat you the same way that we would. And, and we are only looking for the best. So That's nice. Yes. So uh, what about inventory? I mean, that uh, I know that uh, we have some 
uh, that we reach out and uh, kind of get, but like get our own inventory with uh, at least basic parts and stuff that we can like, it yes. means like you can come in and we will get you right there because we have this in stock type of thing. Like when is that coming? Uh, we have that in place right now. We have inventory for maintenance uh, things. Like if you need a, a PM, we, we're now stocking oil, oil filters. Uh, we're also stocking a lot of the air filters. We're also stocking uh, brake shoes so we can get you right in for a brake job. Uh, hub sales, we're, we have all of those things in stock on hand so we're not having to wait for parts to come in. We can just get you right in. We have the parts on the shelf. Um, as long as you have a, a normal truck. Now, of course, if you have uh, a truck that's a... Fancy truck. Yeah. Special you know, truck. Um, <laughs> yeah. A vintage W9 or something like that. It's, 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 it's a little bit more difficult, but as long as you have a, a normal truck, we're, we're going to have the parts for you. Yes. Yeah. But the goal is, obviously, we're going to have uh, a system in place that will uh, look over this and make sure that everything's, uh, you know, uh, stocked up all the time. Yes. Uh, I mean, again, we're not even we're not even 90 days open. OK, <laughs> officially, like uh, in the shop before right. it was road service yeah, outside mobile. call mobile. But this is different. So we're setting, uh, you know, our roots in and just within you know, like, <laughs> what is it, two and a half months? Two yeah. and a half months. Yeah, uh, been what's been months. done already, but there's a lot more to do. And yes, all of this has been put in. Yeah. I mean, uh, the guys are being trained on the way we do things. I mean, yes, uh, yes, because how they did it be before, it's nice, but we right. need... <laughs> we, we're, we're, we're really believing in systems and protocols. As long as you have systems and protocols in place, it makes you way more efficient, mm -hmm. uh, less chances for mistakes, um, and errors, and uh, it just makes us stand head and shoulders above all the other shops. Yes, yes. Alrighty, so uh, we're gonna have Q and A's uh, in a minute. So if you have questions about any of this, uh, please start sending them via text uh, or think about it, uh, and we'll let you guys uh, speak up in a minute. Um, I mean, this is the information uh, that you have on screen. If I can have that shown, please. I just wanted to show you guys, this is the team, this is the, uh, the info, the phone number, uh, you know, Saturdays are by appointment, we are open yes. on Saturdays, if there's, yep. uh, you know, if you come in and you need it done, no problem, we're closed yep. on Sunday, um, later in the, uh, you know, in the year probably we'll extend these hours from 8 to 5 or something yeah, like that. That yes. is another one of our uh, goals, is we're actually wanting to run a day and a night shift so that we can continue to just serve you guys even better. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Um, yes, and then the website, again, check it out. Um, I just want to show some stuff on the website really quick. So, like, uh, you have the front. I mean, it's pretty cool. You guys should check it out. There's the uh, mission and vision, all that. You can read about us. Uh, the story, the services. We are not doing alignments. Uh, we're not doing uh, this stuff yet. All right? Not yet. But, but what's we the will. plan there? Uh, we're, we're currently speaking with Hunter to actually acquire a alignment machine, which we'll be able to do truck and trailer alignments uh, right here at LKG, which would be amazing. That'll be a nice upset. I mean, an upgrade. Yeah, and it's a very very cool system. I mean, it's probably one of the most expensive tools. Yeah, yeah, it is very expensive. Though. Yes, but uh, the it's very advanced. Actually, it's the most yes. advanced, and you could do even a trailer by itself if need to. Yeah, yep. And as far as the reefers, we will have the capability of uh, repairing reefers soon. Uh, there is uh, some certification that you have have to have in place for the uh, free on portion. Uh, we have half of that certification. We have to do the other half of that in order for the certification for the reefer. So we will be able to completely service. You know, reefer units here. So, uh, do you have any certifications already? Uh, yeah, yeah. We we are we currently already have the AC certification, but there is a second tier uh, that you have to have to do the reefer um, AC refrigeration system. Yep. And then brakes, yeah. all of that. We got all of that. Yeah, we we have brake certifications. Yes. And uh, uh, as far as um, uh, what else? Um, I think that's all right. Uh, yeah, currently that's it. Yeah. Yeah, e everything else is just longer classes. So we're trying to pack in everything that we can. As I say, we haven't even been here 90 days yet. So so we're just pushing as hard as we can. 
Texas inspections, those will be available too. Now, it's going to be a little uh, yes. longer on that, but uh, yeah, that's also part of it, right? Yes, that is something we're working on also. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All righty. So yes, uh, here you go. Here you have it. Um, if you have any of these questions, uh, I mean, th here's I got uh, a, uh, you know, map uh, just showing everybody. I mean, this is where we are. I mean, it's so cool that we're literally in the middle between Fort Worth and Dallas down south. Yes. A very strategic next to the love stop right here. If you can see love stop right here. But yes. Okay. So it's time. Thank you guys for waiting on us. And we're going to switch over to Q&A's. Will you work on APU? Uh, Sims, Mr. Sims is asking. Uh, yes. Yes, we will be working on AP, APUs. A lot of things we can do to APUs now. Uh, some of the deeper diagnostics as far as the electronics on the board side um, only comes through Thermal King. I don't have that capability, but as far as if you need an alternator, you have a charging system needs to be recharged, we can do all of that. Okay, awesome. Yes, yes but that's true that uh, uh, you can already do a lot of, and even diagnostics. I mean, uh, yeah. you guys have yeah. uh, Most already diagnostics, diagnostics we can already too do. already. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, what are you charging for PMs and trucks and CAT engine? Uh, what are the rates? So I guess maybe that's something that we can talk about. DOT inspection. DOT inspection, we just spoke about that. That, uh, you know, DOT yeah. inspection versus uh, state inspection. State inspection, yeah. So right. uh, tell us about that, all that. So, of course, the uh, DOT ins inspections we can do. The state inspections we can't. Um, the, spa the state inspection requires a special license from the state of Texas, and which is really in-depth. Um, it's, it's, it's a really a lengthy uh, process, but that is something that we're working on. But we currently do not have the state inspections. Yeah, and I know that uh, uh, details are important, and I just want to mention that as far as the certifications and stuff like that, uh, you know, official brake certifications is one thing because we want to have them within our company. Exactly. But as we mentioned before, our guys, uh, when we were hiring them, they had years of experience even yes. before us. So that's just another point. Do we have this on the Correct. website? Uh, all of our we guys were, have already worked in a shop before. We're not bringing on new guys that are never worked in a shop. And as far as the certifications, your certifications are, are actually listed under the shop that you are currently working in. Uh, my guys have certifications in their old shops, but I would like for them to have certifications under LKG. There you go. So. This is what I want. Thank you, uh, Richard. This is what I wanted to show on the website. It actually talks about the fees. So let's talk yes. about that a little bit. So basically our hourly rate is $125 per hour. Uh, we will also have a uh, roadside assistance. Uh, we charge $250 for the uh, diagnostic scan. Um, and we charge a two hour minimum for, a, uh, for the first diagnostic fee. Uh, that gives you uh, two hours of diagnostic time for the, for the two hours minimum of the $250. Yes. And of course, the per mile and all of that, if need to. Now, we do actually, or we've done towing also. And uh, we were, I mean, currently we're borrowing that, uh, what is that called? That it's actually a uh, draw tight, uh, which is where you recover other trucks. Uh, we actually went to Florida and recovered two trucks, actually. Yes, we already done that with two trucks. But I'm saying, like, we're going to have our own eventually soon. Uh, yes. Yes. But that's uh, also, so technically, I mean, as far as towing, we could do towing too. Yeah, we can do towing. Yes. Okay. Let's see what else. What other questions? Yes. Thank you, Daryl. That's a good point. Uh, he's saying, because of my truck, I should probably call you first and make sure you have my parts because he has a, a specialty truck. Uh, but yes, tell definitely. us about that. Like, uh, what would you recommend? I mean, just anybody drop off here and like, ooh, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely give, give us a... a a heads up. That doesn't matter what in. truck you have. Uh, no matter what truck you have, give us a yeah. heads up that you're coming in. But if you know that you have a specialty truck, and we all know if you know you have a specialty truck, that most places aren't going to have your parts just sitting on the shelf. But what I can do is, within the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, I can get parts for almost anything. Hey, I have a question, Peter. Can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead, Anton. Hey, so with PDP drivers, we bring your truck in the shop for maintenance. Is it a, like, do we pay right then or is it a way that we can have that payment added to our dashboard? Like, let's say I came in and got an oil change. 
Could I have that charge or that service added to my dashboard, being a PDP driver and it being a sister company? Okay, yes, good question, thank you. So first of all, uh, it's two different companies, okay? They're completely separate. Uh, their operations, everything is separate. Uh, so uh, PDP, uh, and, it, and it really depends on each of your uh, setup that you have because some of you guys come with your own truck, some of you guys come with our truck, some of you have the maintenance account, some of you don't. Uh, I mean, it's really, uh, and then, you know, you, uh, it all depends on your balance too uh, because uh, if you've been put money aside, I mean, that's great, and we can uh, step, in, uh, step up for you and help you, uh, you know, uh, based on what you've been putting in. But if you, are, let's say that you have not been putting anything in, and then you call up and say, hey, I need $20,000, well, I'll be like, <laughs> you know, no offense, but like, uh, well, you are saving the money, right? Like, that's what we talk about. And if you are putting up, uh, taking all the money and you're making your own savings account, which again, I got no problem with that. But if you're doing that, then you should be ready for that type of repair, you know. But in any case, it's really case by case because we look at the whole scope of, uh, you know, how long you've been with us and uh, who, what, why and yada, yada, like what the availability, what the repair is and all of this other stuff. So it just really, really depends on uh, specifically you saying if you're approved or what you're approved for and so forth. Now, as far as what Richard was saying just a minute ago, he was saying that uh, to get financing, right? You mentioned right. that a little bit. Can you explain that a little bit more? So basically, it, it would be much like a credit card application. It's a company that what they do is specifically maintenance for cars and actually trucks. And you would have very much like a, a credit card that you could use over and over. You just charge it, pay the balance down, and even if you're in, you know, Florida and you need maintenance done, you can use your your maintenance card, which is like a credit card, and it pretty much works. It it'll be a Visa or a Mastercard, so it'll work anywhere that accepts those. Yeah. So what you're referring to is a completely separate thing that yes. you, as an owner operator, can get. It helps you build your business credit. Yes. It helps you to really, uh, you know, establish yourself and so forth. Uh, and uh, this is very, uh, I mean, this is very common. At least I've done that before. You know, when I yes. drive, when I drove as an owner operator myself uh, with even few trucks. I mean, that's exactly what I did. I mean, you got to be careful with that. Obviously, not to, you know, not pay it and leave the balance for a year or so like then you're just yeah. paying interest and stuff like that but that's on anything like uh, you got to be careful with that but anyway uh my point is it really depends that's the easiest answer uh we want to be helpful we want to obviously help you out as much as we can and it really depends because uh well yeah everything that i said <laughs> so thank you yes Oh, yes, this is a great idea. Thank you, Meredith. Uh, she mentions uh, we do have a Facebook, a, spe a, a special group specifically for our owner operators only. Uh, it's a Facebook page. If you want to uh, uh, be added to that, reach out to the office and they can help you, uh, you know, reach and then uh, add it to that, uh, to that group. And you can ask other owner operators within our fleet. So, yes, that would be great. Thank you for that. Um, I mean, uh, there's our team in there too. We can also help you. Sometimes I've seen some goofing around, uh, like today with that puppy. <laughs> or, no, no, that was a dub. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um, yes, but anyway, uh, it's there so that uh, we can communicate and we can help each other. Um, Yes, and Sam, Myra, if any of you guys want to correct me on this or maybe uh, mention it, uh, I mean, too, but I see Sam, she's mentioning, mentioning all invoices have to be approved just like any other shop. If you are needing me with a repairs, call billing and discuss uh, options and get approvals. Yes, please, 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 everything that I said, it's all true, but uh, that is... An amendment to what I said. <laughs> okay, because Sam is yes. I just mentioned in there as well. The protocol is it's still the same, so repairs do have to be approved. Uh, you can get an estimate with LKG and send that over to repairs. Um, discuss with billing, you know, for options, 
everything has to be approved. Pro protocol does not change. And the fact that um, it's a sister company, and yes, we're all there, does not mean that you get an automatic approval. Uh, you do need to contact billing, let them know you're actually having repairs done by LKG. And if possible, you know, get an estimate prior to you getting the repairs done. Yes. Yes. And it's true, Myra, right? That's, uh, it's really case by case. That is correct. It all depends on if you have a maintenance account with PVP or not, on the amount of the repair. Uh, I mean, there's different factors that um, actually, you know, play to all of this uh, approval. But your best um, option will be to obviously start a maintenance account if you don't have one already through PVP and always contact billing and let them know give them the heads up that you're actually having repairs done even if it's through lkg like i mentioned you know the protocol does not change just because it's through lkg the protocol is still the same yes because it's just like any other uh repair shop thank you myra uh, i got Sadiki who is raising the hand uh that's i like this so if you want to raise your hand uh, i will be able to see it and i can give you a chance to speak so i'm gonna ask you unmute uh Siddiqui. Yes, go uh, ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, I just had a really quick question. Um, with the whole uh, using of the car thing and building a business credit, like, what, I, I guess I should ask, what do they, like, base the credit criteria off of? Because if it's going to go off of my personal credit, what's stopping me from using my personal car to pay for something and just getting, like, points? Uh, this would be, be more like a uh, business credit in which you can, you know, use your, your personal credit. But I was looking more of tailoring towards your business credit because then you're actually building credit for your business. And at some point it, that you would want to grow your business, which may add on additional trucks, uh, you would now have established business credit. I know that in my experience, um, in the beginning when I started with one truck, um, I really, it, it was, uh, you know, ex exchange back and forth. Uh, what I found out later, as I wanted to grow, it really, it was really a huge problem uh, for lenders, bankers, anybody that I talked to, uh, because everything was kind of messed up together and stuff like this. this. was way, way, way when I just started it, like 2007, 2008, 2009, you know, back then. Um, I definitely uh, strongly suggest uh, to start building a business credit because uh, you know that could help you in the long run yeah. and during the slow seasons uh, and again those happens every four years okay the slow season happen every four years you got the yearly cycle the four-year cycle so uh, you know where we are today we're gonna go back to doing really good uh, you know most likely in the near future but then it'll drop again. So learning through that right. with my experience, it uh, was very helpful to by that time that I already had business credit and that was something I was able to tap in. Right. So yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that, you know, that never happened. So my, like I said, but the question was, you know, with us, what, what, what criteria are you guys looking for? Because if, if it's gonna help me build business credit, like a, anybody that basically will, apply for it, will we just get approved for it immediately because like you know sometimes when you do things with business credit they want to see your personal credit just to make sure that you have some kind of a backing or you know so if, if, we're, if we're using this to build business credit what are you guys basing so, that off of so to do the uh the business credit you want to always have a duns number so the duns number theoretically separates your business uh credit from your personal credit Although you may be still be asked to sign as a personal guarantor, but you still would have right. your business credit, making business, starting you know business credit, and that's really ultimately it's a lot easier for you to do things on a business level if you have business credit versus using your personal credit. And one more thing I need to mention, uh, just make sure I'm clarifying. It's the the credit is not actually through LKG. It's no. not through PDP. It's, this is a separate uh, business card that you can get. And yes, technically you can get it on your own. 
uh, uh, we're just trying to uh, uh, have a uh, what 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 would you call it like some kind of um, um, easy so process easy, set up right we we want to streamline the process so that you so that you can basically apply really you know easy we want to streamline that process yeah but it would still have to stand well, on, on your own business credit yes or your own personal credit and uh, and again we don't have this set up hundred percent yet I mean Correct. but we are wanting to have this as part of it that's something exactly. that we are talking about because that's something we we know that it's possible yes right and we know that we can, uh, you know, somehow set this up uh, for easy streaming yes. and stuff. It, it, it goes back to process and procedures. We want to mm -hmm. we want a process that we can really easily uh, streamline so that it is it's really easy for you to get in. Now, if you just want a credit card, of course, you can use your personal credit and you know use a credit card to do the same thing. Uh, we're just wanting to make a uh, a more professional. Um, credit avenue for you so that you can start building your your business credit because ultimately at some point you're going to need to grow even if it's just that you know your trucks getting older which means your repairs are getting a lot larger you need a, a, a avenue to basically do one or two things you need to get a newer truck or you need to be able to uh, take care of larger repairs yes okay awesome okay. did that answer your question Sadiki? no answer the purpose thank you thank you thank you Okay, I got Anton who wants to ask another question. Uh, go ahead. I was just going to speak to the business credit thing that, that, that the guy was just speaking to and just kind of put this out to the drivers. Like, if you guys, I'm pretty sure with PDP, you all have to have an LLC. Yep. When you guys set up the LLC, your state automatically generates you or you're, you automatically generate a DUNS number. Yes. Now, if you guys just call Duns and Bradstreet, they have a service, $74 a month, where they will actually take things that you pay every day and report them as business payments yes. for $74 a month. So your phone bill, um, your diesel cars, you know, I, I don't know, different little things that you guys pay on a recurrent basis, Yep. you know, they will take those bills and they will report them on your business credit. So it will actually show that you have business payment history. It only takes a few payments or a few things, and then you guys can go out and get a $25,000 credit card. Exactly. I mean, I've done it multiple times. I don't use it, but I use it when I need major repairs. So a lot of stuff is just, you know, having the information and the knowledge on how to. You know, you pay these people, these yep. business credit people to, you know, start these business credit and get you these net 30s when... All they're doing is calling Duns and Bradstreet and, and reporting things hey, yep, that's true. <laughs> on your business already <laughs> on your behalf. So for $74 a month, you can call them. They will update your business, the name, you know, what you do. They will put an actual profile on your account. So when you apply for loans, when you apply for stuff with your business credit, your profile is updated. It looks like it's been serviced. And you have trade lines reporting that you pay every day. And it yeah. will build that business credit up a lot. You know, so you guys might want to look into it. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, Anton. And I want to add that uh, what's interesting is, uh, in my experience, whenever uh, the the I strongly suggest that uh, credit is not supposed to be your first safety net. Okay, you should have some kind of maintenance reserve, or you know, either on your own, or uh, I mean, just anywhere to save up money so that you do have uh, you know some kind of uh, repair and you can take it uh, without having to you know stress about it like that is just fundamental uh, you know 101 trucking I don't know, like 101 <laughs> owner operator like you have to have something like that okay secondly uh, yes uh, uh, it's a, a good idea to have uh, you know a potential uh, business credit so that you can uh, not just survive but thrive in cases when you have major breaks down or, or if you need to put tires or anything like uh, some guys might call that as throwing money into the truck well it's not really throwing it's more like investing because yes. if you do preventive maintenance on the equipment on the truck and trailer like it will last you longer okay uh, and I've talked about this uh, before where you know, I had a guy who, uh, one of the drivers, when we got the new 2014 Fredliners, one of the drivers, I gave him brand new truck. This, literally, this truck 
uh, drove i literally picked it up from a deal uh, from a uh, factory and uh, this guy in just six months i don't really remember what was the reason why he stopped by the office uh and just in six months it was beat up every side uh inside everything was like trash it looked like a 20 year old truck and it and he already had issues with it and i'm like well dude like what are you doing to this truck you know and then you have my dad for example sergey who is here actually uh he's had his truck for a long time he bought it brand new in 2016 uh it's paid off right now he i mean that truck rides like it, yeah. it's so smooth i mean yes you have stuff happen but uh that truck has uh, around 600 something thousand yeah, give or take 600 yeah yeah close to 600 and it drives like and it, it not just drives it drives like it it's paid off uh truck trailer paid off like this is what you're uh, what you're supposed to be uh, planning ahead with uh, as an owner operator that's how i did it you know and in time that's how you become um you know stable rich wealthy whatever you want to call it you know in trucking it doesn't happen with you hauling a million dollar load you know oh okay you did it now you're a millionaire no like it's a it's a i don't know what's that um uh repetitive um <laughs> man there's a word for it hobby no no uh, it's like a repetitive cycle, cycle that you that you create for yourself and it becomes a habit <laughs> habit thank you yes. it becomes a habit uh preventive maintenance all of that so anyway my point is uh, I don't think that credit should be your major number one safety net, but it's good to have just in case. I've used it. I'm not going to completely shy from it uh, because, you know, some people think absolutely no credit at all. I'm not one of those guys. I, I would say you do need to use it. Just use it, you know, smart. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it is very good. And Anton, I don't know if you're still raising the hand or not, but... Uh, Yes, let's go ahead and spin. The first winner is It is Joe. Yes, congratulations. Joe, you got to be here to make sure that you receive it. Can you unmute yourself? And or, or mention on the on the chat that you're here. Joe, Joe, Joe. I'm here. I just couldn't figure out how to unmute. Okay. <laughs> there you are. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Congratulations. All right. So the second winner is. Oh, that was cool. Oh. Is it gonna? Nope. Yes, nice. Andrew Sederlin. Congratulations, Andrew. <laughs> All right, Andrew, are you here? Oh, he just have answered. Yeah, I'm here. I guess he's having a hard time to unmute. All right. Most valuable operator award. All right. So, ooh, okay, Mario, you fixed it. Okay, that's good because he was excluded at first. But uh, Mario got it. So Mario, congratulations. Um, so Mario has won the first place, which is $1,000. Congratulations, wow. Mario. Mario. Yes. Uh, second place, I got Jake Hughes. Congratulations also. So you get $750. And then Adam Gentry. Oh, you're back. Okay, you were, you were up there before, and then you come down, and now you're uh, getting up there. Congratulations, Adam. Yes, he's been with us for a while. So thank you guys. Uh, one last thing to mention. The next meeting is on Monday, April 17th. Uh, it's at 6 p.m. We want to hear with, uh, what you guys have to say. We're here as transparent, uh, as professional as possible. And we will uh, you know, make sure that you have the best customer service than any other trucking company. No matter what uh, goes wrong, no matter what, uh, yeah. you know, uh, anything throws our way, uh, we got you, okay? We got you. This is our promise. This is our, uh, you know, dedication. I mean, it's everything who we are. Uh, we want to make sure that you are uh, served the best that you can be, and we are going to be, and we are uh, the best owner-operator company that you can, anybody can, 
I'm not saying this just because, but this is a promise to make sure that we're not going to stop fighting to make sure that uh, you guys are served the best that you can be. So thank you guys. See you next time. April 17th, again, April 17th at 6 p.m. God bless y'all. Be safe out there. And we'll see you next time.